Welkom. Ons volgende gasten in die atelier van ons kijkers en ons luisteraars, ons gesels en mense wat tenminste die wereld probeer verander. Uh, Gail Strauss, Saif Foundation bestieder, en dan Molly McGee, uh, the Saif Foundation, vrijwilliger all the way from America. Gail, a big welcome. Just Thank you. Uh, to start Thank with you. you. So We're going to keep it English because of uh, Molly. She says that Afrikaans <laughs> is very limited. Yes, sorry um, about that. Yeah, but it's been two, two, two years. Accent, oh, so thank that's you. okay. Thank you. Yeah, an American <laughs> accent. We're also going to discuss Donald Trump. Oh, no. Um, we're talking about positive people here. So, Gail, let's start with you. Just a bit of background. Where are you from and how did you end up um, at the foundation and how did it all start? Um, well, I'm originally from Namibia. And... Um, my dad is from South Africa, so I came back to South Africa eight years ago. Um, I've been in law for 12 years before I moved to Cape Town. Um, didn't know what I'm going to expect and uh, started with, you know, tourism and then ended up at Say Foundation about three, more than just more than three years. Um, and it's been my passion all my life long and I've never been happier. Um, sometimes they say money makes the world go round. Um, it's not my case. It's not about the money. It's about the faces that I see every day, the kids' happiness, etc. Mm. But let's just start there. Look, look, the Safe Foundation. What do you do exactly? Uh, you're involved with education with the children. Yes. Um, so you know what is uh, what's, what's a typical day? A typical day. So in the mornings we work in a local township and local settlement, um, and basically the volunteers are assisting the teachers. Um, we also make sure that these educators, which is an early development center, gets um, through the whole grading system mm -hmm. so that the government can start funding them in order for them to be sustainable. We obviously also help um, every day with um, the resources that the school needs. Mm. How does funding typically work? Um, how do you get your funds and how are the funds then dis uh, dispersed in order to, to make that difference? Okay, if we do not get sponsorships, so basically the whole program involves with the volunteers. Mm -hmm. So volunteers would come from overseas and they pay an amount to us. Okay. That amount is getting split up into their accommodation, their meals. We need to transfer them to and from the projects every day. And a part of that goes towards the project that they've chose. So it's a donation part as well. So that's how we keep on going. Mm. Wow. So Molly, being an illegal immigrant, both of you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> you're one of the volunteers, and that's like you said. I mean, you're paying to do this, you know. But just a bit of your background, coming from America, how did you, where did you grow up? Where are you from? Yeah, so I actually I grew up in Topsfield, Massachusetts, a very small town in the East Coast, and yeah, I grew up there my whole life. Basically, volunteering was something I always wanted to do. Mm. Right, it was something I really wanted to do as from a young kid. Sure. I looked it up on Google and then I found Save Foundation and yeah. yeah. And especially kids. I know a yes. lot of people are sorry yes. works with animals, but I mean children and kids. Mm -hmm. that, that was like in your heart. Yes, yeah. I always love kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. During your lifetime, was there something specific that, that uh, triggered that urge of wanting to make a difference? Yes, actually. I would say that when I was younger, well we used to always my mom was a teacher and so we'd always be around mm -hmm. small kids as well. So it was something I always saw and I was very comfortable with. So and you're yeah. very comfortable being here. How long are you planning yeah. to stay? Ooh, Still, because it's two as years long already. as my visa allows me <laughs> before you guys kick me out. Yeah. I know we will never yeah. kick you out. You're making Thank a you. difference. Uh, and so for just like also a typical day, volunteering, uh, you know, the, the experience, especially also working in the townships. How was that for you? Was that kind of a shock yeah. as well? Uh, because you don't see that, that, that difference in a, a poor and rich people in America. Yeah, I think that's true. There's such a large gap here in South mm. Africa as far as like the economy goes. Mm. I would say that when I first went into the township, it was a little bit jarring at first because mm. it was probably more than I expected. Mm. But I think after a while, it was something that really motivated me to continue doing what I was doing. When yeah. it comes to volunteer work, what would you say or how would you describe the perfect personality for volunteer work? I mean, you get to do with, with, with quite a few of them. How would you describe that? I would say somebody who's open-minded, willing to try new things, probably has a thirst for knowledge and for travel, that kind of thing. Yeah. Are you are you allowed to be emotional? Is that I'd okay? Yes, Is definitely. It? I think that's kind of what drives you. It creates passion, that kind of thing. So. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Mm. How many volunteers are you currently working together? About 30. We have about 30 typically, and we spread them across several different projects that happen in the morning and in the afternoon. Is it? Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Ons gesels met Gail Straas, bestuurder, bestuurder van die Sy Foundation, en Molly McGee, Sy Foundation, vrijwilliger al die pad van Amerika af. Um, Gail, just to start with you again, you guys work in townships, but it's also an organization, organization bigger than just South Africa. Yes, definitely. Um, we work with other NPO organizations in Africa. Um, currently, we are assisting in Uganda, in Ghana, Tanzania, mm. Malawi, um, and we would love to take it to my home country, to Namibia, in the future. Um, so yes, it's definitely not something that we concentrate in South Africa. It's not just making South Africa a better place, but making Africa a better place in entire. Yeah. Mm. Molly, what, what would you say, since you are hands-on also, you're one of the volunteers, uh, what does the volunteer work involve? So the volunteer work involves, in the morning, we have like a computer program for the older kids. Okay. And then in the afternoons, we'll do skate, surf, and swim lessons for them. So that kind of gets them out of the townships in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. And then also we have a school and educare program. So that's people that mainly want to focus on like the younger kids, stuff like that. And so they'll work in the schools mainly all day. Swimming lessons like in, uh, in the ocean at Meisenberg with all the sharks or swimming pools? <laughs> no, we start with pools. <laughs> we start with pools. Let's start small and safer. Do you, do you, are you planning to expand to like Gauteng and the rest of South Africa because you're based in Cape Town? Yes. Um, it's obviously something that we want to do. Mm. Um, but you need sustainability. And um, that's one of the things that... I think an NPO organization or any NPO organizations struggle with is funding. Mm. Um, so, and in, in order for any N, NPO organization, we need sustainability. So it, it needs to, that's why it's back home mm. where we actually from, so from Cape Town um, and we can take it further, but um, we need funding as well. Mm. You just mentioned sustainability and funding. Uh, from an NPO's perspective, what would you say are some of the other biggest challenges you guys need to face on a daily basis? Um, awareness. Is it? Mm. I think there's not a lot of South Africans that know the volunteer companies and what they do and how mm. they can get involved. Mm. So yeah. I think awareness is, is really big. Um, and then obviously sustainability and funding is, is for me, it's the cool. most, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then with funding, uh, people can just get you on your website and get involved like corporates. Um, but like you said, the volunteers are all also paying, yes. doing the volunteering yes, work. Yes, they definitely do pay. And that's how we run our business. Mm. Um, it's a non-profit organization, but, you know, they pay for their accommodation, like I said before, and mm. they pay for their meals. And a big part of that goes towards the project that they've chosen. Mm. So if they chose the surf project, it will go towards the surf. Mm. We need surfboards. We need wetsuits, you know. Mm. Um, these things don't last years and years. And I think sometimes you don't need to think of it as, as spending that money or paying it. It's almost like you're investing in someone else's life, which is a, a very good thing you guys do. Exactly. Molly, um, so you, you're a full-time volunteer. You don't, you yes. don't do any full-time <laughs> job. Do you think, I mean, that's, that's really going the extra mile. Definitely. Would, would you consider um, volunteer work if you had like a full-time job as well? I definitely would because, is it? yeah, it's something I'm very passionate about. It would definitely not be as often as it would be now, but mm. I think that's something that is very good for you as a person to do, whether it's on weekends or doing fundraisers in your own time, mm. anything like that, yeah. How, how do you do it? Is there people that privately fund you as well, or let's say your parents can do it, or people corporate can, can also fund the volunteer? help you pay for the volunteer work. How do you do it? Well, personally, I do some freelance jobs. I okay. do some online marketing jobs for other people. Yeah, but um, I do have some donations to myself as well from family members who are really passionate about what I do oh, as well. So special. that helps. It does help. And then both of you, you know, that's why I say we're so excluded. We don't, we don't get to, into townships that often. And if you see the need, um, uh, where's the biggest need if you look at poverty? I mean, even like we mentioned surfing, just to get kids out of a township environment um, already makes such a big difference. We're not used to suffering like that. We're, you know, let's start with you. Sure. Um, it's really difficult because, you know, when you work in these townships, so, so you work with the kids in the schools, in these educare centres, um, but you also see 
their living conditions and mm. how they live. Mm. Um, you know, not having an inside toilet, have to share a toilet with seven, eight other families, mm. um, have to share a tap. There's no taps in their houses. They live in shacks. Um, so that for me is, you know, if, if I could do something about that, I mm. would. But at the moment, we're working with the kids. We're trying to give them a better education. Mm. I always also say it's not just about um, my volunteers being with the teachers mm. and just assisting them in the classroom, but it's being a role model to these kids. Breaking, breaking the thing that, you know, um, they, we were bad people or mm. they did us wrong. You know, mm. me, there is, you know, there is, like Nelson Mandela said, you, you know, Kids don't hate. Mm. You, you teach them how to hate. Yes. Um, and these people come, the volunteers come and they show them just love. Mm. You know, some of our kids also have alcohol abuse in the houses, drug abuse in the houses. So the schools, these educator centers is basically their safe haven. Mm. It's their five hours of feeling comfortable and feeling getting love. food because we make sure that they, they get meals twice a day. Mm. Um, and getting the love. Mm. Um, sorry, Mola, I wanted to hear your opinion, but we have to go. Uh, thank you <laughs> for the work you're doing. You're really an inspiration, both of you. And thanks um, yeah, for just coming all the way to visit us. Thank you. No thank so you for having us. So, you can come here and be a volunteer or not, we understand it geldelijk.